Hello, Sim Gamers, and here we are back on a beautiful day at Kerbal Space Center, getting ready for our next episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2 for science! Into Mission Control we go to take a look at our missions that are coming up here. Coming up, we've got to take a look at Better Signal. It's really time for us to stretch our interplanetary legs. We're getting farther out into the Style Object Kerbal. <laughs> That's a bug, by the way, a typo in the thing. Uh, we're getting further out into the Kerbaler system. We're going to need to set up communications to keep getting signals. Objectives. Set up a vessel with a probe core and an antenna with a minimum range of 86 gigameters around Joule. For 5,000 science. This is brought to you by Joel Kerman's smug uh, Smudgeless Lenses. After a lens smudge was misidentified by a Kerbal Astronomical Society as a celestial body, Joel Kerman knew that the only way forward was eliminating smudgeless. Joel Kerman's lenses ensure transparency. Other missions that we might take a look at. Kyo stationary orbit, um, vehicle with a probe core and stuff like that on, at a specific altitude. A curb-wide tour. Launch a vessel at Lander Cannon Crew Observation at Cappy Rock. Okay, whatever. Lens test. Um. Ooh, this one could be fun. Joel Kerman's smudgeless lenses wants to see if their lenses tarnish in an ammonia-rich atmosphere. Joel really takes the smudgeless part very seriously. The closest atmosphere that fits the bill is around the gas giant, Joule. It looks like we've got a long flight ahead of us. Transmit or return an atmosphere survey from Joule. So for this one, we need to figure out how to make a uh, satellite or something that is able to go through the upper atmosphere and either transmit while there before getting destroyed as it plunges into the ever increasing density of the Joule atmosphere or um, is able to like survey the very upper atmosphere and then get back out. And we have a vessel with a probe core with an antenna with this minimum range. Eve's sphere of influence, big and husky, uh, the upgrade a little chonker. Three is company. Land on Ike with a crew of three. All right. Well, it seems like our next challenge for our better signal is Jewel. Let's get into this mission brief. Hey, how are you, Director? Why am I jogging in place? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting my steps in. Speaking of steps, we've been thinking it's time to take the next one. We noticed your mission to Duna. The communications link got spotty at times. If the next signal follows the pattern, it's a coin to come from very, 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 very far away. So far, we might not hear it. Even worse, if we do get far enough to detect a signal, we could lose our connection with the vessel mid-transmission. I can't begin to imagine what one of our crew would do unsupervised. Those pods don't contain infinite snacks. Well, if it's up to me, you will never lose contact. Your objective is to send a vessel with a probe core and an antenna with a minimum range of 86 gigameters to orbit the planet Joule. I've heard the engineers say that part selection is the sacred process that you should let the antenna choose you. If you aren't sure where to start, I suggest being chosen by an RA-15 or a Communitron HG-55. You've already flown a similar mission around Kerbin, so you should be a pro. If this was a test, you'd probably get up a pro grade. <laughs> Remember that big green crystal at the end of the Mun Arch? I think it's, we think it symbolizes Joule, the sixth planet of the Kerbolar system. That Viridian gas giant has five moons. I put some tape over them on the star map so no one gets confused. When you've set up the antenna, report back. We're very close to decoding this message. So, we need a probe that can get to Joule and just park itself there. This is not a return trip mission. Um, so, we don't need to worry about that for this one. So... Click this card up here if you want to see the full build of this particular mission. Uh, otherwise, continue watching forward and we'll get into the mission itself. 
All right, Sim Gamers, here we are on the launch pad. We are ready to get this jewel mission underway. Let's go ahead and get this countdown kicked off. We did a final check of our stagings and everything, and it's all looking good. We have a thrust to weight ratio of 1.5. That means pretty standard ascent here. So I am looking for 100 meters per second on my surface. Um, counter. SAS is off. Begin our gravity turn. Ooh, this thing. And that's the wrong way. We want to turn it this way. I don't want to have to do any plane changes fixes later. D, prograde. Okay, good enough. <laughs> I forgot I had rotated my probe core, so pay attention to that. If you rotate your, your probe core, it's going to have a different bearing on the compass. And we are once again launching underway, looking for approximately 45 seconds away from our uh, apoapsis. The solid rocket boosters do their work. And... Staging. Throttle up. Throttle up for staging. Beautiful. The thrust to weight ratio of this engine is just right. We're pushing our apoapsis up and out of the atmosphere. Getting into the thinnest part of the atmosphere. Very soon we'll be able to drop our shroud as we launch the satellite to Jewel. Now, I didn't do a summary of the build, but it's pretty straightforward. We've got a lifter vehicle, and we'll explain the intermission workings when we get there. So here's what we've got going on on our way to Jewel. We've got our main satellite stage, which is using a xenon thruster. This is going to give us enormous quantities of Delta V. Um, and our main, our, basically our mothership probe body. Right here we've got a little tiny probe guy that we're going to release in a basically a collision trajectory with Jewel, and then we'll have the major probe body re, re, uh, reorganize its orbit so that it's not entering the atmosphere. But we're going to see if we can use this commutatron to transmit atmospheric data as this plunges into Jewel back to the mothership to transmit back to Kerbin. This is a good thing to remember, Sim Gamers. Let me just pause, talk about this. This is a fortuitous circumstance, what I call a fortuitous circumstance. We have to be launching near sunset, crossing into the sunset area of Kerbin. And I know that I'm going to Jewel eventually. I didn't even look for a launch window that was appropriate. I just said, we're going to Jewel. Um, and I'm going to use that technique of basically just establishing a loose circular orbit around Kerbal. And then calculating from there. It takes more time. It's not, you know, as time efficient, but we can still use home and minimum, minimum transfer orbits. But since I'm crossing into the uh, night terminus here, the passing into night, I know that if I apply forward thrust now, it will extend my periapsis out this way along our orbital plane from Kerbin, which is exactly what I want to do to establish a higher orbit anyway. So I am just going to go prograde where I'm at right now and punch it, Chewy. So we're going to let this rocket engine with its remaining fuel just push this thing out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. We are extending all of our panels now to get our lights going. Uh, the solar panels are colliding a little bit. That's not ideal. As far as design and, and sun shadowing is concerned. But you know what? Live and learn. So we are on escape trajectory from Kerbin. And I am just going to go ahead and decouple right now. Double check which cup decoupler we're using. And we're independent. Now under our own power. Xenon thrusters take a very long time to get us anywhere. 
And that's and and they use electrical power as part of their part of their spec, basically. So that's why we have our panels set up so that we have plenty of sunlight coming in. All right, I'm gonna see you guys as soon as we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. Okay, same gamers. Our probe has twelve thousand delta V and is in the edge of basically has left. Kerbin's sphere of influence, and now we're going to begin trying to find an intercept for Jewel. Drez Jewel. Set target. The first thing we need to worry about is our descending node. Uh, but I do want to take a look to, just to see where an encounter would be happening. I mean, Jewel's way over here. So it's going to be a while before we even need to, right? This is a this is a half a year out. Our ideal situation would probably be over here somewhere. To get ourselves to Jewel. What that means is that we can get our plane change figured out. This is a descending node once again. So we're above Jules' orbital plane, crossing over, going downward at this point in space. So we'll just add the delta V required to zero that. And time warp there. We are maneuvering. Here we go. We're maneuvering ourselves to our burn vector 30 seconds away. Gonna do whatever I can to sort of keep these solar panels all facing directly at the sun uh, at our Kerbal. Like so. In 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. This is a longer burn. In fact, it's going to be a 45 minute burn. This is one of the coolest features of the Kerbal Space Program, too. You can actually uh, time accelerate during a burn. And cut off. How'd we do? Trash that. Check our numbers. Beautiful. Precision flying at its best. We are now aligned with the same orbital plane as Jewel. Now all we need to do is find an intercept. So it looked like somewhere around here was the, was the place to do it. So we'll just extend out a prograde launch. About like that. So again, we're taking a look at these numbers and letting it, understanding what the heck it's actually telling us. It's telling us that Jewel is going to be here. Our Jewel is here at 2B, which is our craft is going to be here. So we're missing missing Jewel by a bit. We just fix that by rotating. And it looks like we have some potential jewel encounters right there if i focus in on jewel zoom in wow that is a spectacular looking encounter right along the orbital plane of the moons dipping within the uh, boundaries of the t of two of the moons so that you know given how far we're going and how finicky or getting orbital encounters can be this transfer orbit is going to do do us just fine let's go ahead and fast forward on out there all right the engine is running we're going to be thrusting during this whole duration here and we'll be uh running this burn from the map because there isn't much to see it's not like we're going to see any other planets or anything uh the only thing i have to worry about is if we lose power momentarily
Okay, we're aligned. We got our burn going. We'll time accelerate through this. And that's one of the coolest things about Kerbal Space Program 2. You can actually time accelerate through these burns. Which makes this type of navigation really, really good. Coming up on less than a minute. Go ahead and go down a normal time acceleration down to 30 seconds. So when this burn stops, we'll have an orbit approaching what we had uh, scheduled for Jewel. But then, since we're already out here, I'm going to go ahead and make some mid-course corrections, actually. Okay, my orbits and everything, my metrics and everything changed, so we have a Jewel intercept occurring. Now, quick save this. Here's what I'm looking for at this point. I'm going to keep on thrusting to bring this Jewel periapsis down, but... Since we are coming along the orbital plane of many of these moons, it may be possible for us to find a gravity assist from one of the moons to help us establish an orbit while reducing the amount of actual delta V and, and energy we're going to use. So I am intentionally slowly moving this periopsis to see if we intercept any of these of Jules' moons. One, two, three, four, five, Jules, five known moons. All right, Sim Gamers, situation report. We are at the edge of Jules' sphere of influence. Um, we have successfully uh, captured and transmitted back some environmental data. We're at a point in the mission now where maneuver nodes really aren't helping us all that much. Because the amount of thrust I can apply with the current satellite is 10% of full throttle. Um, maneuver nodes just aren't capable of making that calculation. Apparently there's a bug going on right now in the game. Probably because of saving and loading and, and other various things where I can't do accelerated... Um, I can no longer do accelerated maneuvers. Time accelerated maneuvers. So what we're actually going to do is basically just face ourself retrograde. We're going to lock the periapsis here and I'm just going to turn the engine on full throttle. And I'm actually going to adjust where I'm aiming so that my, my periapsis changes very little during these burns and I am going to make sure I'm, I'm just my solar panels are all facing the sun as best they can and we're going to do a series of full power burns to change our orbital velocity we were going to disconnect this satellite to have it uh, encounter the atmosphere um, of Jewel basically ahead of the ship, but since we're doing maneuvers so far away, and this only has a little teeny tiny antenna, it would actually get out of communication range, and I want that bonus science. If I'm going to go through all this trouble of flying two probes to Jewel, I want that bonus science, because <laughs> I bang on the desk. So, we're having to fly this manually. And in manual flying, like I said, all I'm doing is making sure that my periapsis stays right about where I want it to by aiming a little, just a tiny smidge, radial in or radial out, depending on what is called for. And I'm essentially beginning the burn now because these burns are going to be so long, even at full throttle, that um, in order to make a substantive change, I need to start making my, new, my maneuvers now. Now, the handy thing is, this satellite has plenty of delta V for exactly these kind of burns. So we'll do a full throttle burn. Hang on, hang on. We'll do full throttle burns. And this is the kind of thing we're looking for. Hang on, what do we got going on here? Oh. It just looks like we would be uh, encountering Jewel again at another time. Okay, back to our th full throttle burn. 
<laughs> we're essentially changing. I mean, and we're obviously changing our our thrust, our orbital mechanics here, because we would have ended up having a second jewel encounter. But like I was trying to say, a series of full throttle burns will eventually start running into some, um, some jewel moon encounters. In fact, what's my orbital plane look like right now? If I say set this as my target, our ascending and descending nodes are, are way out here. So we can fix our, um, we can fix our planes at another time and maybe start using some of these moons for gravity assists. So we go ahead and use up all the battery power that we can, leave some back in the tank for us to recharge over time. And we're just going to repeat that process over and over and over again. And this is why we can only have 10% throttle on at any time because we just chew through our power too quickly. Coming back up on full power. There we go. Where are we on the map? Still looking good. Bring up our jewel periapsis. And again, back to a full throttle burn. We could probably go full retrograde here. We're losing some periapsis, so I turn on SAS to stability on and just slowly tap, in this case, the uh, A key to get that periapsis where I want it and staying more or less where I want it. A series of full power sputtering burns of the this low power xenon thruster we're carrying this other stage because we need to bring it with all the way with us so we're looking at 0 0.01 thrust to weight ratio right now got this comment from gabriel g lao nice series so far i'm binging it aside from constantly not spelling minmus correctly i have no complaints well gabriel i went back to my playlist and corrected the spelling based on this comment thanks again for your feedback All right, we are at Jules Apoapsis, which means we have some new science to grab. Uh, I'm going to save transmitting that stuff for later. What I want to do right now is go ahead and see about hitting the brakes. Just to bring our Jewel periaps uh, Apoapsis down, hopefully maybe get us off a collision course on the other side of, the, of, of our lathe encounter. There's lathe, everybody. Uh, we're going to capture some more science. We're not going to do any transmissions. Actually, no, we're not going to do any transmissions right now. We're in the, we're in the, we're in Jules shadow. We've completed our fly of lathe and we've gotten mission. I forgot to track the mission in the, in the mission control. So I went ahead and tracked this one, but, um, we've gotten mission credit for our establishing an, uh, orbit around Jewel. So once we turn that in, we're going to have 5,000 science available for us, but we're not done with this mission yet. I want to continue to try and change this impact zone so it is not an impact zone. The next best place to do that is going to be right about here, um, <clears throat> where we can do a radial inburn um, to basically pull our apoapsis inward and our, push our periapsis outward. We've done as many corrections as we can at this mid-course uh, mid, mid correction point. Uh, you can see that rather than crashing into the side here, we're kind of getting closer to actually have an atmospheric, more of an atmospheric uh, entry. So the next phase to do any adjustments is going to be at the apoapsis. We are indeed facing prograde. Okay. At the apoapsis facing prograde, full power, And we may have to do this a few times as well, where we go full power, drain the battery, 
or we're just trying to accelerate so that this spot on Jewel sort of continues to move. But we can see it's actually finally moving. In fact, it may not take all that many uh, burns right here to make this change. Okay, Sim Gamers, we have been turning on and off, on and off, on and off our engines as our battery allowed out here at our Apoapsis. And we have basically an atmospheric flyby happening and also an app, uh, flyby of Tylo available as well. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, given how how little like this gravity well of Jewel is so strong. This little engine just isn't really able to do like it isn't able to affect this orbit a whole lot right now, especially with the other probe on its, on its, you know, in its weight class. So here's what I plan to do. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, periapsis to uh, 150 kilometers, which will allow me to basically drop off the Go ahead and do the probe drop. And then we're going to raise our periapsis to like 250 kilometers. That should hopefully keep us within range of the probe for its transmissions. So we're going to go ahead and try that. Our final burn here to get our periapsis where we want to. We have plenty of electrical power. Coming up on the periapsis height I want, I know that re-entry occurs between 200 kilometers and 150 kilometers for the probe. We'll go ahead and save that. Um, we'll face orbit normal. And once we get to orbit normal, we're going to drop off our probe body. Here we are, orbit normal enough. As soon as we get stable. Okay, let's go ahead and activate. Oops. Let's uh, get some light here so we can see what we're doing. We're going to enable control from this probe. And launch it. It is on its way. We'll go ahead and grab command and control here. Extend our antenna. And... Uh, it doesn't have any power of its own or any. Uh, we go ahead and turn on the torque. Have it face retrograde. Now our ship should be able to turn prograde. Hopefully. And just add just a little bit of velocity to make sure that we're not crashing through the atmosphere. Because I want I want this ship to do the grand tour of as many moons as it possibly can at low and high periapsis. Like this one at Tylo is crazy low. <laughs> but the first thing we have to do is... Uh, not crash into Jules' atmosphere. So we're just going to change our meters per second by just a few. Get this to 200 and let's go 225. I know I said 250 earlier, but 225 should be sufficient. And 225. We have a bunch of science on board that we can transmit. It's only going to take 200 units to transmit it all. Well, that's bothersome. This little craft simply doesn't have enough electrical power generation. I should have put on larger uh, solar panels. Or something. So, it looks like... The only way to get the science that we want...
is to crash the other craft into Jewel. Okay, the other thing impacted on Jewel. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to face... Uh, I want to, I want a closer approach to Tylo here. In fact, oh, hang on, hang on. Have we transmitted all of our science? Yes, all of our data has been transmitted. Just double checking. Okay. Um. That's actually the wrong thing I want to do. Okay, so we're going to grab some more science along the way. Um, we'll go ahead and warp to Tylo's periapsis. Where there is some more science to collect. And therefore, some more science to transmit. Every little bit of this is going to help us get our stuff together. Now we're going to go back to the Jewel Apoapsis, which is way out here. Go retrograde and um, like back at Mission Traffer, Tracker, we still need to transmit or return an atmospheric survey from Jewel. So we're just going to go retrograde. Make sure our panels are on the... getting as much sunlight as possible. And drop our periapsis to... Um, to re-entry... Uh, re-entry heights. Thankfully, this ship has enough battery power to not have to rely on solar power, power to do the command module controls for a long time. So the solar panels burn off in the atmosphere. That's fine. We've established our mission parameters and now we're going to go ahead and get this bonus mission. All right, Sim Gamers, we are coming up on our primary re-entry interface. New science is available. We have environmental samples of the jeweled atmosphere. Let's go ahead and begin transmission of that for the bonus. And we will see how this craft handles arrow breaking through the upper parts of Jules' atmosphere. Well, Sim Gamers, that is it for the Jewel of the Nile. It is on a full blown re entry course into Jewel. However, it has served us well along the way. We have more samples we can transmit. Atmospheric data from its from the equator worth 2100 science. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a parachute or anything, so it's going to just fly down and sort of blow up. Well, Sim Gamers, we did finally get our successful mission signal done. So let's go ahead and submit this. Another successful mission, Director. You're getting quicker. <laughs> Actually, this uh, took approximately five hours to get done between loading a quick saves and trying different things and getting back to what you actually saw in the episode. Uh, that or my sense of time and space is off. I blame the decaf. I'm all about tea now. The longer you steep it, the stronger it gets. I wonder how strong you can make it. I must ask the department heads. Your satellite has already yielded results. We have another signal. This time it's coming from one of Jewel's moons, Tylo. There's a good chance this signal might be the last. After all, we're so far out into the Kerbolar system. Where else could we go? We're really going to have to put your heads, put our heads together on all we've learned from the previous monuments. I feel like there's something that they want us to know or do, but what? The decoded message might help. 
The message says, Honor for Gorja, the oldest one, the dreaming tree that bears the fruit of the world, whose unwaking eyes walk over the tetrad, and whose roots are watered with knowledge. So tetrad, that's four, right? Like the four stalks of the tree guy? Gorja, one stalk held one of those squiddy uh, non-kerbals, another had a kerbal, and the other figures were broken. Was tree guy, uh, green, tree guy dreaming of Corbin, of Kerbin? Or something else? Why is Kerbin at the heart of all these clues? This is so exciting. Who knows? Maybe what you found on Ty find on Tyla will be the key. Good work out there, Director. You've made all of us incredibly proud. We quote unquote set up a vessel with a probe core and antenna with a minimum range of 86 gigameters around Joule. Uh, we also got this lens test done. Nice. This atmosphere survey looks great, and Joel's, uh, Joel Kerman's smudgeless lenses are still crystal clear. I sound like an ad, but I never really appreciated the clarity of those lenses. I asked Joel if he'd consider branching into eyeglasses. He said he already tried, but he found the market for glasses with 10 kilometers spherically ground lenses was too small. Thanks, science. So we have accumulated 11,000. 800 science we're going to to look at in the next episode as we figure out what to do with this tylo monument until then i'm sim gamer and this has been kerbal space program 2 for science <laughs>